Welcome back, Gadgeteers. So, I'm just doing some more retro computing. Uh, something to keep me busy and keep my mind off of health issues, which most of you know about. If you don't, feel free to go check out my videos uh, on the channel regarding dilated cardiomyopathy, also known as DCM. So this is a continuation of my previous vintage computing video. So I'm working on my Pentium 166 computer and it actually is a dual boot to Windows 98 or DOS 6.22 and Windows 3.11 using a boot manager. I foolishly decided to do updates on Windows 98 and my sole purpose for Windows 98 is to be able to play in the future here Glide games. So uh, I have a video card on the way, a 3DFX Voodoo 3 that'll let me play Glide games. The problem is I did the updates in Windows and I started getting this error. So I'm going to go ahead and rebuild it. Let me show you something. So if I press any key, it'll actually log in for me. Uh, but basically, if I do anything, play any games, go into DOS mode <clears throat> for the Eye of the Beholder games, even if I do a log off, the system will freeze and I'll get more of those blue screens. So I'm going to try shut down, restart in MS-DOS mode, and I'm going to blow away this installation of Windows 98 and do a new one. But Let's see, does it actually work? I can't believe it worked. Surprise, surprise, I guess miracles do happen. So I was watching another channel, Retro78, I believe. I'll look it up and I'll have it in the description down below. So you can see the very top directory is Windows 98 SE. That is the installer directory, and then we have Windows, and we have program files. So my thinking is I'm going to delete both of those, just like I saw in the video, and then I'm going to reinstall Windows 98 and hope for the best. So let's go ahead and use delete tree, and we're going to zap program files. Well, it took quite a while to delete the program files. We're now going to use delete tree to delete the Windows directory. And then we will run setup again. All right, well, we've successfully deleted the Windows directory. And now what I want to do is go ahead and do setup. So I'm going to change directory to win98se and run setup. And scan this succeeded, so I will exit. By the way, I do apologize for the sound you may be hearing from the computer there. It is pretty loud, much louder than a modern computer to say the least. All right, so we're going to start the Windows 98 setup. It says about 30 to 60 minutes. I don't think it'll take that long on this computer, but hard to say. So I think I'm going to pause it here. And then once it gets done doing the installation, I'll come back. I'm going to accept the agreement. And then I do need a product key. All right, got the code in. I hope it works. Ooh, the product key you entered is invalid. Woohoo! All right, so let me double check my product key. All right, well, 
after uh, about an hour and a half of work, uh, I finally got the Windows 98 installer to work. The installer that was on the drive for whatever reason would not take the key codes. So unfortunately, basic Windows 98 DOS mode doesn't have a driver for the CD-ROM. So I had to put the CD-ROM in my Linux computer and put the Windows 98 CD I had in there and then copy the Windows 98 install CD to my SD card and then take the SD card and put it in the SD to IDE converter and then copy my Win98 install folder to my C drive. And now we're doing the installation. I'm not going to bother to record the rest of it because so much stuff goes wrong and doesn't work right. It's ridiculous. There's one thing I wanted to show you. My GeForce 4 MX 420 showed up. It is a PCI card. So as soon as I get done doing the installation and the system boots up, I'm gonna take out the GeForce FX5200, I believe, that's in there that will not go into uh, OpenGL mode or any type of DirectX 3D or anything, and it, it fails immediately and crashes, and replace it with this card, and then we'll be back. Here's the GeForce 4. MX420 PCI card. Windows 98 is installed. I've got the drivers on my SD card, so all I have to do is boot up with this card in and install the drivers, and hopefully we'll be playing a video game or two in Direct3D mode. I don't know if you noticed this gray cable with the piece of paper stuck between the wires here. This is plugged into the sound card and it's actually used to play CD audio. So if I put in a music CD, I can actually play CD audio, which is a feature we've been used to forever and a day, but on the older computers, you did need to plug one of these cables in and then run it up to the CD-ROM drive or the DVD-ROM drive, whatever you had at the time. And with that cable, I can actually listen to music in Windows 3.1.1, DOS 6.2.2, as well as Windows 98. Well, that's the sound of the fan on the video card. It does actually come up, but <laughs> uh, yeah. Used equipment, what else do you expect? So I gotta pop this thing out again and see if I can put some white grease on it and get the fan working. Well, white grease saves the day. The card is the fan on the card is now very, very quiet. Hopefully it'll stay that way. Most times my experience has been that once the fan is out, it's out and it's not gonna work. So if you're wondering what I'm talking about when I say white grease, it's WD-40 dry lube. Now it comes out wet, but if you wait maybe a minute, it dries up and it is a dry lubricant. All right, here we go. Well, I'm hoping it's actually going to work this time. I installed new drivers for the GeForce 4 MX420 the previous set of drivers that I used did not work, and it's evident immediately. And you'll see what I mean here in just a second. Not looking any better, so I really don't think there's anything wrong with the card. Um, I feel like it's probably a bigger issue. Um, Maybe this card with this motherboard, it's hard to say. So I'm gonna stick in the FX 5200 and we're gonna try that and see what happens. Well, unfortunately, Motocross Madness will not play on the FX 5200 uh, by GeForce. So this is the error message I get after the initial time I run Motocross Madness and it crashes. And then after that, it cannot see a 3D card anymore. So I guess I'll just have to wait till the 3DFX uh, Voodoo 3 card comes in. 
Well, with a mere snap of my fingers, look what showed up. Let's open this package and see what we got. Got the handy dandy cutter out. Wow, good packaging. Air bubbles around it and then bubble wrap. Hopefully it's in a uh, anti-static bag. Looks like it is. Second layer of bubble wrap. This thing was definitely well packaged. Which I appreciate. I hate to see things get damaged in shipping. You know, you wait and wait and wait for it to show up. You're all excited when it shows up and then it ends up that it's got damage. Worst feeling ever. But, yep, I see a anti-static bag. Looks like it's also taped down, but inside is a, whoops, sorry, get in the camera here. 3DFX Voodoo 3 2000 with, I believe, 16 megabytes of RAM. Let's see if we can get it out. I'm going to ground myself on a computer first. And there it is. Let's get this baby installed. All right, here we go. Watch the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Voodoo 3 2000. I'm gonna escape out of the memory test. Runny nose. So we're loading boot magic. I did get this working. Um, when I installed Windows 98, it actually overwrote the master boot record, the boot sector of the drive. And all I had to do was run, well, actually I had to create a boot magic rescue disk and was able to save the partition information and reinstall it. <clears throat> So we'll bring up Windows 98. Now I have a driver for 3DFX already on my system, so I'm hoping it'll work. Now one thing I want you to keep in mind is so far with all the video cards I've had, only this one has actually worked correctly. So, and this is the S3 Verge. I don't know how well you can see that with four megabytes of RAM. The problem is of course, it's super duper slow. All right, got a pretty basic 16 color ugly login. So it says, hey, you got a new adapter. Now let's see if I can just install the driver through here, but I think I'm probably going to have to run an executable. <clears throat> we'll do have disk, browse. And we hope I can remember where I put it. <laughs> uh, maybe here? Here? Maybe there? So far, no good. Well... Looks like I'll have to download the drivers because the drivers I put in the folder. Now the thing is, we could check and see if it needs to be run. Let's do that. We might have to execute a program. 
Sound card's still working. That's always a major plus. Now, this picture I have back here is supposed to be grayscale, but not 16 color grayscale. All right. Source. Drivers. Huh. So they're definitely is but it's i think this is only for OpenGL. so looks like i'm gonna have to go hunting find the drivers and then we'll install them over here on the left we have my linux system i'm seeing quite a lot of more and i do apologize let me see if i move this slightly better not a whole lot better but uh, over here, you notice it says SMB Pentium. That is the name of the computer over here, which is the Pentium computer. And then D is a shared drive. So in that shared drive, I'm going to go to the source directory and then drivers. And then over here, you probably can't see it, but I've got another window open here. And I'm going to grab this. I'll just copy it so you can see what I'm doing. And over the network, paste in the folder 3DFX, which theoretically should have the newest drivers. All right, let's move back over to this computer. And you can see now that 3DFX has shown up. So we'll double click it. This is supposed to be the latest drivers. I'm not sure why it has a driver 9x folder as well. Let's see what happens when we run install. Not a valid Win32 app. Seems odd. We'll do a quick refresh. Well, given that it's acting that way, what I'm going to do and hope that it actually works is go to actually, do I want this? Yes. Settings, advanced, adapter, change, next, next, browse, 3DFX, 3DFX, driver 9X. Next. Huh. Let's go back. Do another browse. Put it right there. See what happens. Nothing. And when I click next, it still wants to use the standard PCI graphics adapter. All right. Well, unfortunately, this is going to take more work than usual, which is the way it is with computers, but you already know that. So I'm going to keep working on it. And once I get the driver up and running, I'll come back. All right, we're back. So I ended up getting a different version of the drivers from Phil's Computer Lab. I don't know if you ever watch videos uh, on YouTube of his, but they're absolutely excellent. And philscomputerlab.com has all the drivers for this vintage hardware that you could possibly want. So let's go ahead and minimize. And just curious, let's see what mode this driver is running in currently. We'll go to settings. So we're in high color mode, 800 by 600. I think I'm gonna leave it at that for right now. And this is now the fourth video card I'm gonna try with Motocross Madness. I'm really hoping this is it. We're gonna get it working because Felicia wants to play it. So let's launch 
motocross madness and see what happens. All right, I'm gonna turn the audio down just a little bit before we get rolling here. So it has to test the video card and analyze what it's capable of before we can actually start playing. The odd thing with the motocross, motocross, motocross madness CD, it actually didn't have anywhere in the rather meager documentation what uh, hardware requirements there was. So unfortunately, um, we know it works with Windows 98. I don't know if you can see in the corner there. Windows 98 designed for it. So it should work. All right, well, didn't have any success getting Motocross to launch. It just kind of hung there. So I've run the uh, DX Diag, DirectX Diagnostics tool. Figured we'd have a look. Says no problems found. Media drivers, DirectX, no problem found. We can test Direct3D and DirectDraw, which we're going to do right now. So far, so good. An error occurred while setting your display to 640 by 480 with 16-bit color. It's not necessarily a problem, though some programs may not work without support for this mode. Oh boy. How about Direct3D? An error occurred while setting your display to 640 by 480 mode with 16-bit high color. This is not necessarily a problem, but I think that it does explain why Motocross won't start. But let's go into properties and settings. Let's bring the resolution down to 640 by 480 and see if it can do it. Yes, it can. Just a quick check to make sure. High color 16 bit, 640 by 480. Let's run DX Diag again. And I think we're probably going to get the same result. Let's try it anyway because 2D is different than 3D. No, it does seem to be working now. Yes, we saw the spinning cube. Now we're testing hardware accelerated rendering. Not looking too good. If this card is not working correctly, um, my immediate suspicion is the motherboard, but not a hardware problem. I would say a BIOS issue. So I'll start tinkering, tinkering around in the BIOS if I can't get it to work and see what happens. All right, I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to disable the video BIOS caching. Um, I think these IO recovery times are probably fine. Never turned on delayed transaction. I'm going to leave that. And the other thing that I did is in the PCI configuration, I've set reset configuration data to enable. All right, we're back in DirectX Diagnostic. We'll just get right to it. We'll go to display. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and test Direct3D right off. Okay. I would try different drivers and all kinds of things, but for the fact that this is the third video card that didn't work correctly with this particular motherboard. So the next thing I'm gonna try if this doesn't work is 
I'll do a BIOS defaults reset and we'll see how that goes. It ain't looking too pretty. I'm glad they have the DirectX diagnostic tool, but this video card can do Glide 2X, Glide 3X, and OpenGL games as well, but there's a lot of games that use Direct3D, so I really want to be able to run Direct3D games like Motocross Madness. All right, I'm gonna restart it and set the BIOS to the defaults. Well, uh, since I've reset the BIOS defaults, the computer detected the printer port and the serial port, the second serial port. Whoops. I don't recall the 3DFX logo coming up in the corner. Do you guys? Well, anyway. And the sound went back up. I thought it would stay down where I put it, but I guess we won't worry about that. We're just going to jump right to the test. TXDI. Okay. Display. Test 3D. Let's do it. Well, we had that before, so that's nothing new. Yep, I saw a spinning cube. Hardware acceleration. Ooh, this might be a deep, mysterious fix for me. Thought. I don't know if you see this down here, but I have DirectX 6.1a installed and I don't know that it's going to help because I did try installing all the updates at one point. This is a fresh install of Windows 98, but I think I'm going to go ahead and download the latest, well, DirectX 8, which I know the 3DFX card supports, and maybe that'll work. Well, as luck would have it, my alarm came on to uh, prompt me to take my drugs some more heart medicine not those kind of drugs anyway uh it worked fine it showed me the cube let's test direct draw Ooh, pretty yes yes very exciting Yes, we saw the white bouncing box. Now, what I think I'm going to do, go to Properties, and Settings. Let's go ahead and jack this thing up to 1024 by 768. Well, as luck would have it, um, I was talking, and then I got a phone call from my doctor, so I had to take that. It was the cardiologist. Um, things are looking good. So the direct 3D work, the direct draw worked. Um, what I've done now is change the display mode to 1024 by 768. I'm going to go ahead and run DX Diag again. Remember, we were having a problem. Let's go to display. When the video mode was higher than 640, by 480 so we've changed the video mode to 1024 by 768 and we are now going to test direct draw 3d there's the pretty cube in direct x7 yes i did okay hardware accelerated direct x8 And there's the pretty spinning cube in DirectX 8. What I'd like to do now is try motocross. And if I can get this thing working, 
All right, it's gonna do the test. Let's see if it can actually do the test. We just wanna see if we get decent performance. Uh, the only card that worked before was the S3 Verge. Uh, Stunt Quarry. I'm taking the same options I took last time. I try to be consistent on my testing. Uh, Arizona Exploration. Same bike and driver, even though he looks like Spider-Man. Takes a little while to load. Love the sound effects. Hyenas in Arizona. The dog's barking, I could I could understand, but sounds like a hyena. I, I don't see that there would be a hyena. Okay, let's see what we can do. So far, it looks really good. Uh, this is 100 times better than it used to be. By the way, I'm a terrible driver. I'm going to crash here. I told you. You'd think Spider-Man could jump off the bike or something. All right. I have no idea where the road is. This is actually working beautifully. I have a joystick also that I need to install. I believe it's called the Wing Wingmaster Digital Extreme. Can I go up this wall? Well, sort of. All right. Success, we got the 3D card working. All right, that's gonna about do it for this video. I hope you had a good time. Um, and, and maybe you get an idea of troubleshooting. Don't, don't be shy on using other sources to help you out. Phil'sComputerLab.com is where I got the drivers for this video card and the DirectX version. Uh, I consider it a trusted source, so you're not gonna get drivers that um, may have some type of virus in them or whatever. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and a shout out to my Patreon members. Thank you for supporting me directly. I really do appreciate it. Have a good one. Thank you.